God doesn't want you to go to hell. That doesn't mean it's not just. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve it. But God doesn't want you to have to pay the price that you've earned. We've shook your fist and sinned against him all your life, and he wants to save you. God the Father sent his Son, Jesus Christ. We hear Son, we think child. But that's not the case with Jesus. Son means inheritor, the one who is heir to the throne. The Bible says Jesus existed with God before the beginning of the world, from the beginning of time. Before time, because God created it. Jesus was there. Jesus is the member of the Trinity that actually spoke everything you see in the creation. He is our Creator God, and He came to earth as a man, and He lived a perfect life. And if you think that means He didn't lie, if you think that means He didn't steal, you're right, but it means more than that. The first commandment is you should love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. On my most pious day, I have never loved God the way He deserves to be loved, and Jesus Christ did. Every minute of every day, he kept all of God's commandments. We stand guilty. We deserve hell. Jesus Christ, though we sinned against God, paid our fine. When Jesus hung on that cross after laying down his life, his father looked down on him and he did not see his perfect son hanging on that cross. He saw me hanging on that cross. He saw each of you. He saw your sins and he poured out the wrath you deserve on his son Jesus Christ. And as a result, now it's possible that one day when you die and you stand before God's judgment throne, he will not see you. He will not see the sins that you've committed your entire life. But he will see the righteousness of the Son, Jesus Christ. And you cannot be more righteous than that. You can work the rest of your life trying to live a good life. You can try to do everything you can. You can give money to charity. You can walk old ladies across the street. You can never be more perfect than receiving credit for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Jesus came here so that we could be reunited to God, but it doesn't apply to every single person. Most of the people you see walking around here, I'm sorry to tell you, this day are on their way to hell. And the reason why is that according to the Bible, we must respond in a certain way to what God has, to what Jesus has done in order to be saved. You've probably heard a lot of things in your churches about how that happens. There's two things that must happen. One is to repent. Repent does not mean go to your priest and confess. Repentance means agreeing with God you're not a good person. Repentance means admitting that you've sinned against the Holy God. It means telling Him you don't want to do it anymore, and that you know that without His help you can't stop. Calling on God, pleading with Him to help you to turn from your sins. If we're in a car headed to San Diego, and I see a sign that says we're five miles from the Canadian border, it's not enough for you to tell me you're sorry. We need to stop and turn around and go the other way. You must turn from your sins. If you have a pet sin, whatever it is that's in your brain right now, that you're thinking if you listen to this crazy guy in a box, that you have to give up that thing and you love it, and you're not willing to give it up, as long as you hold on to that one secret sin, your repentance is not true, and God knows, because He knows your heart and He knows your mind. You must repent of your sins, and the next thing you must do, you must trust in Jesus Christ as your only salvation. He's the only one who died for your sins. He is God himself. No man can pay for even his own sins, let alone yours. Jesus Christ is your only way to heaven. Trust him. Trust him the way you trust a parachute. You can't just believe in a parachute and jump out of a plane. You'll die. You must put on the parachute. And when you step out the back end of the plane with the parachute on, you have one option. The chute opens and you live, or it doesn't, and you die. And you must trust Jesus for your salvation in that way. You can't rely on your own goodness. You can't rely on some ceremony. You can't rely on anything else aside from Jesus. And when you repent of your sins for real and in truth, and He knows, and if you trust in Christ alone to save you, the Bible says, Jesus says, He'll forgive you. He will change you. He'll take your heart of stone and He'll give you a heart of flesh. God will know you're saved, and you'll know you're saved because you will be changed forever. The things that you used to love, those sinful things that were so important to you, you're going to lose your love for them. They're going to go away. You're going to grow to hate them. Those, those things you used to hate, silly things like going to church and studying the scriptures and the things of God, you're going to start to love those things. It's not something you have to work your way through. This isn't quitting something cold turkey. God changes you inside who you are and what you are. And I'm here to tell you today, folks, that if you walk some aisle in church and you prayed a prayer and you got baptized in the baptismal, if your life
life has not been changed, if you are still enjoying your sins, we have a different relationship with sin. Christians hate their sins. Unsaved people love their sins. They get up in the morning and plan what they're going to do with them all day long. If you are still doing that, mark my words, you are not saved. All that happened to you when you got baptized was you got wet. You must <laughs> repent. You must turn from your sins for real. You're still going to sin. Christians fall into sin. But when we fall into sin, we hate it and we plead, we beg God for forgiveness because repentance doesn't happen one time. Once you start it, you will begin it and you will continue it for the rest of your days until the day you die. So I ask each and every one of you, please consider this. None of us is guaranteed another day. Some of us might not make it home tonight. This is the day of salvation. This is the day that God has called us to repent and trust in Him that we might be saved. Please consider it and call out to him the same way I'm speaking to you right now. Tell him. Speak to him. No one else can do it for you. Thank you. Yeah.